Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining today. Welcome to uh, DevOps for Java Shops. Uh, my name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And um, I'm going to show, I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro. And then um, I'm going to, most of the session is going to be a demo. Got a live demo for you. So hopefully you like that. Uh, but um, if you want to find out more information about the session, I'll have this QR code at the end too. But I've got a repo out there, DevOps for Java Shops. It's got all the code and step-by-step -step instructions on how to recreate the demo I'm going to show today. So, yeah. So I'm going to go through four things. Uh, what is DevOps? DevOps with GitHub. Uh, I'm going to show you the demo of GitHub in action or DevOps in action on, on GitHub, uh, and then uh, tell you how you can keep your investments because a lot of folks already have DevOps built. And uh, I'm going to show you some new stuff, hopefully, uh, but I'm going to show you how you can keep the things you've already invested in as well. So we'll start with a little description here, just so everyone's on the same page. Uh, most people have a good handle on what DevOps is these days, but um, this is one of the quotes I like to, to share whenever I get a chance. Uh, it's by my colleague Donovan Brown, uh, and it's a great quote. DevOps is the union of people, process, and products to, to enable continuous delivery of value. So I highlighted a few things there. Uh, people, process, and products, really the most important parts of this. Uh, and value is, is the most important part if you're not going to invest uh, in... The people, process, and products, there's probably no point in setting up a DevOps environment anyway. Uh, so let's talk about people, process, and products. Uh, here's some of the things you hear when you're working on any project. It works on my machine. You know, who's supporting what? Uh, where's my code? Uh, how can I get an update? An update on the project, update on the code, uh, everything. And, uh, you know, how's the timeline? How are we uh, keeping things delivered on time? Uh, are we... Uh, making sure that we actually deliver what people are looking for as well. Uh, <clears throat> and that's important. I'll talk a little bit about that more in the demo. Um, here's a typical software development lifecycle process. Uh, you plan, you develop and test, and then you release things. And the fourth one is always neglected, I find. Uh, monitoring and learning is one of the most important things you do because quite often uh, whatever was put in the plan uh, sometimes gets lost when you go through development test and release. Everyone's just so focused on actually doing their part of the job that you don't actually deliver the original intention of the update that you have for the project, the software, for the organization that asked for it. So it's important to do monitoring and learning as well to make sure that whatever you deliver was actually what was asked for in the first place. Uh, it's harder than it sounds. Uh, for the demo today, I'm going to talk about products from Microsoft because I work for Microsoft. Uh, but there are products that are sort of equivalent on other cloud platforms as well. And I'm going to speak about GitHub, which most of the cloud platforms or most dev shops use anyway. Um, so uh, for developing, we've got GitHub, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. Um, how many people here use Visual Studio Code, by the way? Just a few hands. Okay, okay, about half. Good, okay, cool. Um, yeah, we've got some cool Java tools for Visual Studio, for co uh, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, the Java pack, we call it. Uh, so check that out if you haven't. Um, now Visual Studio Code is a free open source uh, text editor you can use. Uh, and of course, GitHub has a lot of free features as well. So most of the things I'm going to show you today, actually all the things I'm going to show you today are free uh, to use. Um, also, you can deliver uh, using Azure Pipelines. Azure Pipelines, is, some people might know it as Azure DevOps. Uh, we have GitHub Extensions and GitHub Actions too, and I'll explain the difference between those in a minute. Uh, and then for managing and securing, we have Azure Monitor, uh, which is a great way to just enforce policies and make sure that you're not uh, delivering any, any vulnerable software. Um, a lot of open source packages out there, as everyone knows, uh, JShell and others uh, in the past um, have had uh, vulnerabilities that you might have in your, your organization, you might not even know it. So Azure Monitor is a great way to manage that. Azure Policy is a way to manage what kind of platform you're running on. Uh, and then we have automation to actually deliver everything. And we have a security center. We spend billions of dollars a year on security. It's funny, um, when I talk to customers, uh, like three years ago, it was like, oh, we can't put our 
software on the cloud because we need security. Uh, now it's like we have to put our software on the cloud because we need security. Uh, most organizations are sort of realizing that it's really hard to keep up with uh, threats and vulnerabilities out there these days. And the cloud platforms have, they spend billions of dollars a year on making sure that they try at least to keep one step ahead. So what I'm going to show you today is GitHub Actions, um, specifically uh, some ways that you can deploy things automatically using um, code editors. Uh, I'm also going to show you this thing called Code Spaces. How many people here know what Code Spaces are? Okay, cool. You're going to like this. Oh, a few. Okay, cool. Um, you're going to like this. It's, uh, it's a way to actually manage and edit your code on the cloud. And it sounds, it's, it's way better than it sounds. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about GitHub Actions today. I'm going to explain GitHub Extensions as well. Uh, and um, integration with popular IDEs. In this case, uh, Visual Studio Code is what I'm going to show. Um, we also have whoops, uh, Azure Boards. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have this Azure DevOps product. Uh, and you can check that out. We have Kanban boards built into it. So Azure Boards is what we use internally at Microsoft all the time to deliver projects. Um, it's pretty good. It has integration with pretty much everything. Uh, Azure Pipelines is for releases and for building. So you can build things. You can borrow one of our servers. We call them virtual hosts. Uh, and you can use that server with all this preloaded software to actually build and test your apps without taking a load on your uh, organization's machines. Uh, we have our Azure Artifacts, which is for managing packages. In Java, of course, it's uh, mostly Maven, uh, but you can also manage a, a Node and other package, uh, packages as well. It's great for compliance and for um, managing uh, versions of things as well. So GitHub is the largest platform on Earth. Uh, it's actually got, I think, 100 million developers now. This is always out of date as soon as I put it up there. Uh, there's so much stuff out there. Uh, if you go to GitHub, let's see if they published it yet. Um, State of the Octoverse. Let's see what we got here. There we go. This is a great little report. Uh, there's two things I use to get information, free, free information, about what's going on in the uh, cloud world and what's going on in the software development world. Uh, this is one of them. I was hoping the 2022 State of the Octoverse would be published, but it's not. Uh, the li latest one is 2021. But you can see here uh, some of the updates from that slide. So 73 million total developers on GitHub, um, 60 million new users in 2021. But this is kind of cool stuff, talks about, um, yeah, in Europe, uh, with, hasn't increased too much, 0.7% from last year. Uh, top languages, so this is kind of cool, everyone likes to know about this. So JavaScript, of course, it's not quite fair because they have Node and React and all these other things. So they're always at the top, but you can see Python sort of taken over around 2018, 2019 from Java, which is number three, uh, and anyway, some cool information here if you ever need it. Uh, the other place I go is Stack Overflow for surveys, but enough of that. Oh, okay, so that's just a little bit, uh, you know, GitHub, most people have, have, have heard of it uh, and probably use it, uh, but the one thing that a lot of people don't know is it actually enables and uh, manages DevOps for you as well. Uh, so I'll show you some examples of that today. Uh, you can deploy anywhere. You can deploy on-prem. You can actually run your tests and your builds on-prem as well uh, using managed hosts that are local. Uh, you can deploy, of course, to Azure, uh, AWS, and the Google Cloud as well from GitHub. Uh, so CI, CD, uh, it's natively integrated. So and what I'm going to show you today in the demo is anytime you make a change to your code and push it to your GitHub repo, it can automatically uh, start a process that will publish things out to the cloud for you. Um, there's a lot of tools out there already for building GitHub Actions. If you need GitHub Actions, just look for GitHub Actions Marketplace. Uh, and it, you probably, any kind of crazy idea you probably have, uh, 
GitHub Actions, there's probably already an action in the marketplace, and you can just copy it. It's script, it's open source, uh, some of it's built by vendors, some is built by contributors. If you're a contributor to that, thank you very much. Uh, but it's all written in YAML uh, and uh, really easy to, to follow and control. Uh, GitHub Mobile, so a few things I want to tell you about that not a lot of people know about. So if you're using GitHub, GitHub Mobile is really cool. I had to use it this week. Uh, I had some, at Microsoft, all of our documentation is actually managed through GitHub. So we actually write Markdown and we publish it up to GitHub and then there's a review process you go through. So I was um, in Heathrow on my way here and <clears throat> somebody had a question in GitHub. I was able to go into GitHub Mobile and edit the question and uh, make some changes to the doc and we actually published the doc. Uh, they didn't have to wait for me to get somewhere where I could use my laptop and connect to Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Uh, so GitHub Mobile is pretty cool. Uh, code Spaces. So I'm going to show you Code Spaces today. Not a lot of you have heard about it um, based on that show of hands. But Code Spaces is basically uh, you go to GitHub, you fire up a container, and that container has Visual Studio Code or a version of Visual Studio Code built into it and a bunch of other facilities. And you can actually build and then push your code back to your GitHub repo as if you were working on it locally. Uh, so any computer anywhere uh, can use uh, code spaces. And you can use it from any browser, including your phone, so uh, if you want to do that. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to do uh, code on the phone, I find, but it can be done. All right, so let's go with the demo. So we're going to do A-B testing and blue-green deployments today. Uh, A-B testing is where you have a new feature but you're not just going to deploy the feature, figure out if it works, and then roll it back if it doesn't work, right? So you can actually send that feature to some of your users. Let's say half. Send, send this. Uh, whenever people visit your site, half the people will see the new feature. Half won't. Half will see the old feature. And then you can monitor. Remember I mentioned monitor and learn. You can monitor what's going on, the behavior, and make sure that it has the intended effect before you roll it out to everyone. Uh, I'm going to show you that with something called feature flags. Uh, and then blue-green deployments as well. You can do blue-green deployments this way as well. You can deploy things to... Um, uh, blue-green deployments is where you deploy things out on a measured uh, schedule without disrupting the site. So you don't have to bring the site down, bring it back up. You just deploy some of the site to some of the locations uh, some of the time, until the whole site is updated with the new versions of the features you're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's A-B testing and blue-green deployments. Let's get into the code here. All right, so what I want to show you today, this is a Spring Boot application. It's a really simple one. Uh, you can find it, uh, well, I'll show you the link uh, again at the end, but uh, DevOps for Java Shops has the link to this sample code for you. Um, it's just a little menu, and I mentioned feature flags. So I'm just going to show you a demo what feature flags can do. So this is a feature flag manager. I can click on this little enabled button here. I update the feature flag, and when I go in here, you're going to see two things. Hopefully, let's refresh that. There we go. So this is Bit. This is our developer advocate mascot. This is the feature I implemented by checking that box. So this is basically turning on that feature in the website without a deployment. So this is the same app, it's the same website, but I have a new feature here. And if you see, there's a little beta menu option here as well that wasn't there before. So uh, I updated that, and I can, if, if we don't like it the way it looks, uh, we can go back in to the feature manager and we can just turn it off. And then the next time you go into this site, Sometimes this caching takes a little while to refresh. Next time you go to the site, it's gone. So that's Feature Manager. I didn't deploy anything. I just changed the application with the ch little checkbox there. So how does that actually work? And that's what we're going to go through today. Um, this is my uh, Azure portal. And in my portal, I've got a bunch of dashboards. So this dashboard's called DevOps for Java Shops. But I, I organize things by the talks I do, because that's what I do. But you might organize it by country, or geography, or team, or something like that. But you can create these custom dashboards. And what we've got here is this is a resource group. And inside that resource group, I've got applications. And this is, this is the uh, July brown bag application that I just showed you. Uh, let me just make that. What was that? OK. Make that a little bigger. 
so you can see it. All right, uh, so the July brown bag thing. Uh, over here on the right, I've got a bunch of links for things I use in this presentation, uh, just to show you how things work. And then down here, uh, down here I have the configuration manager so I can get to that easily too. So you can kind of configure all this stuff easily. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a new version of this. This is already deployed. I'm going to create it from scratch and show you how I did this. Uh, and uh, well, we have, yeah, we have a little time left, about 20 minutes for this. Um, so let's start with our dashboard. Inside the dashboard, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a new web app. So this is called an app service. Uh, and if I go down to web app, create. So we're going to create the web app. We're going to add a feature flag to it. And we're going to deploy it through GitHub. Uh, so the subscription is my subscription. Uh, I have a DevOps for Java Shops resource group. Remember, I showed you that box in the portal. The, I already have a resource group created, or I could create a new one. And I'll call the web app name jbcnconf. CNConf 2022. Hopefully that's not taken. .azurewebsites.net. It has to be a unique name because it goes out to the website. Um, <clears throat> then I select a runtime stack. I can do .NET, of course, it's Microsoft. I can do Java and Node, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Oh, they added Ruby now, good. Um, so I'm going to do Java 11, but uh, you could do 8, 11, or 17. Uh, then for the web server, I'm going to just use the default, which is um, Java SE, but I could use a Red Hat JBoss, Tomcat. Uh, you can bring your own license if you already have Red Hat or others as well. Um, but we're just going to use the Java SE. And I'm going to use the location. So we have all these things called regions. I think we have 160 locations. We call them regions because we have multiple locations in a region. Like there's actually one opening in Spain soon. It's in several physical buildings in the region. But it's uh, not just one location, if that makes sense. So I'm going to use West US 2, which I know already has an app service set up. And the app service is Java Shops. It's a Linux app service. And I've got this crazy big uh, SKU for this. I just upgraded it before I did this presentation. This is one of the cool things about app service is I had a really low level app service just running. But before the presentation, I want things to refresh really fast. So I just fired up a, uh, I just literally created a new version of this app on a much more powerful server. So that's what I did. Uh, then we've got these uh, zone redundancies. You don't need to know about that, but zone redundancies basically will give you multiple locations for your app automatically. So if one, if Spain goes down, Switzerland will still work, and et cetera, et cetera. All right. So GitHub Actions. Uh, this is where the CI/CD part of this comes in. I'm literally just going to create, click uh, Enable, and we're going to use the bbens GitHub account. And now what we're doing is we're actually connecting to GitHub. Hopefully, it won't ask my password. Good. Uh, and I'm going to use this something I already have called DevOps for Java Shops test feature flags. Uh, and I'm going to use the main branch. And what it does is it actually creates a YAML file for me. And the YAML file is right there. Um, I'll show you that in a bit, actually, because we have to edit it. So this is going to fail the first time I deploy it, because I don't have the feature flag connection done, and the build will fail. Not a great design. Uh, normally, you don't want to do that. Uh, you want to have a resilient application that will not fail if the, something's not connected. Uh, but in this case, it's for a demo, so I want it to fail so I can show you how to fix it. All right. There's a fly there. All right, so next there's uh, networking we can do. Uh, you can enable network injection if you want to, which is basically a way to do a reverse proxy. Uh, you can set up monitoring, which is, as I mentioned before, monitor and learn. So we have an app insights. I'm not going to do it because it takes a few minutes to set up, and we uh, don't have a lot of time. But uh, you can set up monitoring, and the monitoring will actually give you uh, information, great telemetry about the application. Uh, then I can set up some tags just to identify this. And we review and create. Let's make sure I got this right. All right, still in DevOps. Yep, 
Okay. So what it's going to do now is it's actually going to save this web app. It's going to create it, and it's going to push that YAML file out to my GitHub action. And the GitHub action will then, or sorry, my GitHub repo. And the GitHub repo will then trigger an action that actually builds and tests and deploys this thing. So it says deployment in process. And it's going to say deployment succeeded, which uh, uh, it's going to say deployment completed, which is kind of true. It didn't succeed because it didn't work. But uh, uh, let's go to GitHub now. So this is the actual GitHub repo. And if I go into actions, OK, ba, ba, ba. where is it? Actions. All right. There we go. OK, <laughs> took a second to update there. Um, you never know how long it's going to take because of the Wi-Fi and stuff. Um, so add or update Azure App Service is basically what it's going to do. It's going to do a build, and it's going to run it. It's going to check out the code, and it's going to put that on something called a hosted agent. And then it's going to fail. It's actually going to fail this build, and then uh, it's going to uh, tell me that the deployment succeeded over here, or sorry, completed over here. Let's see. Deployment is complete, which is kind of true, right? Uh, the deployment is complete, but it is also failed. So if we look here, oh, it's still building, still build. Oh, there we go. So the build failed, OK, because we didn't add the feature flag. So what happens is this feature flag requires a connection string to be added to the app so it'll connect between the feature flag and the app. Uh, and I didn't add that yet. So where you add that is in GitHub. So let's go into. Ba -ba -ba. DevOps for GitHub features. All right. Feature flags. What I want to do is, here's the workflow. So you go into the GitHub workflows directory, which gets created when you create an action. Hey, it's taking a second to load. There we go. So the JBCN conf 2022, I've already disabled these ones over here. But um, this is the one that we just created. And in here. I often add the reference to the feature flag uh, using an environment variable. Uh, the environment variable itself is already in settings. Now, I could edit this right here, but I don't want to do that, right? If I go into settings, I can see secrets, actions. You can see the app configuration connection string is already there, but the reference to that is not in the actual application. The other secret that gets added is this that was just updated two minutes ago. This is the app service token, the published profile that connects the app service to the GitHub repo. So not just anyone can deploy to your app service. You need security for that. Uh, and not anyone can just push to your GitHub repo. They have to have this token connecting the two of them. Otherwise, it won't, it won't basically work. It won't deploy things to your code. So you can't have just random strangers posting things to your web app, which is a good thing. Uh, OK, so what we want to do is we actually want to edit that that I showed you before. So we talked about code spaces. If I go in here, most people are probably familiar. You copy this. You do git clone in your local machine. You download it. You make changes. You push them back up, right? I can also do this new thing here called code spaces. Code spaces, I can create. I already created one here. Um, let's create one. And what this does, it opens up a new browser tab. And it connects to my repo. And it's actually going to create a clone of my repo in a container. And then it's going to open up a version of Visual Studio Code that runs on browsers. And then I can edit that and change my code. So while that's running, let me copy this. This is my secret that I have to copy. OK, don't look. <laughs> All right, so it's still connecting. Da, 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 da. Like I say, this is a live demo. Sometimes it you never know how long it's going to take. But it's going to work. I can also open this code space in VS Code Desktop. So I can actually open it here, reload the window. All right. For some reason, it didn't, didn't like that. I think I lost the connection or something. All right. So over here, here's my code. Well, it's still loading, but this is my code. It is. 
<laughs> it's still loading. Hang on a sec. See that there? It's like doing stuff. That little blue, I don't know if you can see it there, but little blue thing tracing around the top. That's opening the editor. Okay, good. Uh, Codespaces is running a little cool, slow today. Uh, it's probably a lot of load or something. So down here I have a terminal. I can use this terminal. I can do bash, uh, or I can do uh, zsh fish. Uh, I can actually do uh, command line as well, but uh, because this is a Linux uh, application, it's already been identified as that. Um, and Linux environment, then it'll actually just open up default bash. So in here, we need to go into our workspace. We need to go into that YAML file that was created, and we need to add, oh, actually, let me just go from here. I already got it in an old one, so I gotta do this. All right. Right here. It's a little distracting. My mouse drops every time I let go of it. Oh, this is one thing to note. So down here at the bottom, for those of you at the back, it says, oh, it's a little fuzzy. Extension pack for Java extension is recommended for this repository. So I can install Java, but I don't need to do that. I can, I can install the Java pack into this version of Visual Studio Code. And what it'll do is it'll set up something called a dev container on the code space. And dev containers are kind of cool because let me just save this while we're here. I'm not going to do this, but I am going to save this. All right. And when I save this over here, it tells me that I've updated one thing. Now, keep in mind, we're on the browser, but this is a different, this is a clone of my repo. It's not my repo, right? So I opened it from the repo, but it opened a container, made a clone, put it in here. And then what I do is I edit this in the browser, so I still have to push back to my repo, just like anywhere else. Uh, and that's going to trigger the um, GitHub action. So let me do that, and then I'll talk about dev containers and hosted agents. Um, let's see, jbcnconf and bar update. OK, commit. And it's going to tell you you're lazy, you didn't stage it, but that's OK. All right, so uh, I did the staging and commit there just by pressing the button. And now I'm doing a sync, which is going to do a push and pull. And when I do the push and pull from here, which is the container, it worked. OK, good. Uh, now it's going to trigger another action over here. There we go. So this is actually working as jbcnconf nvar update. So while that's running, let me explain uh, the dev container. So I mentioned before that install the Java pack. I could actually have a pre-built environment inside my code space using these things called dev containers, which is JSON file. Uh, and the JSON file, you can save the environment once you get it set up. It'll save a JSON file, and then whoever uses that code space after that uh, can use that pre-configured environment, including Java or Node or any, any other software that you need pre-built into your um, environment can be there and ready for people to use. So that's great for compliance, for example. So if you have a team of people, uh, you can use code spaces. And you can enforce what people use in terms of software, add-ons, and everything uh, using a code space. So there we go. The build worked. Another thing I want to talk about is the hosted agents. So just to explain a little bit about what's happening here. Uh, when you're running that thing in the GitHub action, it's actually in uh, hosted runners. And hosted runners are actually using hosted agents behind the scenes. What is that? So GitHub hosted runners are basically, uh, that's the container that we mentioned before. And they contain a whole bunch of software already. So inside that container is pre-built. Uh, you've got uh, Windows Server, Ubuntu, several versions, and Mac. So you can actually use any one of these. And if I go into Ubuntu, which is what we're using there on that agent, uh, it has a ton of software already built into it. So it's got the Linux kernel, of course. It's got Bash. It's got uh, Perl, Python, Ruby, Swift, package management, all kinds of stuff. Um, everyone's, everyone can see these. Uh, <laughs> it's got all kinds of CLIs built into it. So pretty much anything you can run uh, is already pre-built into these containers. So they're really pretty solid major containers and dev environments so you can run and build things. Uh, where's Java? 
I don't know, it's in here somewhere. Uh, so there's just a ton of stuff already. And if something's missing from here, so you need an old version of Node or something weird, uh, you can go and get that, and you can add it using annotations into your, um, into your YAML file. So pretty much anything you can think of, you can run in those hosted agents. So that's what's actually running when I look at... There we go. So, ah, yay, the build worked. So the build, it built and it deployed, but the deployment is still going to fail, and I'll tell you why in a second. Still loading. Okay, there we go. So application error, this is the bad kind of error to get because it tells you that your application didn't work yet. Um, there is a way to check this. This is an app service, so you don't have a lot of control. It's pass platform as a service, but you can do this thing called kudu m. So JBC, JDBC, oh, sorry, JBCN conf 2022 jet lag, uh, dot SCM dot Azure websites dot net. You'd add that dot SCM before Azure websites dot net, and then it opens up this thing that you can use, which gives you some insight into your environment. Hopefully. Oh, it's slow today. Come on. Refresh. Continue. <laughs> All right, everybody. Stop using your Wi-Fi for a second. All right. <laughs> How much time we got? I always still have lots of time. Okay, cool. Ugh. Okay. So this is the environment that we've got here. And if you look here, I can go into the root and I can see that the app.jar uh, deployed. So Maven built this uh, Spring Boot application and created an app.jar, and it deployed it here, but it's still not working. And that's because we have a connection string from the feature manager to the application. So this is a demo I like to show because it's a real world demo. Uh, it's not just a hello world with nothing connected to it. I, I don't know anyone who has an app that just sta is a standalone app these days. It needs to be connected to something, database something. In this case, it's connected to a feature manager. So the build worked, the deploy worked, and if I go into deployment here, I can see everything worked. Uh, set up the job, deploy to Azure Web App. Uh, everything worked, but when I get to the application, it's not working, and that's because we have to add the connection string to the feature flag. So back to Visual Studio Code on my local machine, not in code spaces. I need to copy this again. This is the uh, secret, so don't look again. Uh, <laughs> it's um, uh, what we need to put into our actual application. So if I go into the application, should be here now, JBCN conf in my dashboard. I hope I got to refresh. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. Anyway, hold on a second. Come on. Live demos. What are you going to do? Let's try here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. All right, so now I'm going to open this up, and I've got to go down to the configuration. And in the configuration... I want to add an environment variable. And that environment variable is going to link to the application, just like we added in the YAML for the build that worked on that hosted runner. Uh, now it needs to work on the actual in the production environment as well. Ugh, so slow today. OK. All right, so what we do is we actually set a new application setting. And we're going to call it app. I think it's called app configuration connection string. Usually it just comes up. Yeah, app configuration connection string. Copy. Now it's, you know what, I'm going to type ahead now, it's going to give it to me. No. Okay, new application setting. There it is. All right, now I have to copy the value. I can get this from the actual feature manager too, but this is just a little faster for demos. Paste. All right, so we say okay, then we save this, continue, and once it gets to the web, 
it's going to be pretty quick for updating this because I've got that mega web app running right now. OK, updated web app settings. Yay, OK. So let's go back up to the overview. Let's get the app. Bum, 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 bum. Come on. There it is. OK, so now we should have, still got the old error message. Come on. Oh, no. OK. Well, we can fix this another way. What's that? Come on. I did this. All right. Maybe we've got the wrong connection string. So let's go into, now you can see how to debug these. Extra bonus here. Let me make this a little smaller so I can find things. OK, so get DevOps or GitHub features. If I go in here, so this is what I have to do. I didn't want to do this. I want to do this a little faster. Uh, if I go into access keys, now I can do this connection string for the primary ID. OK, and by the way, you've got read-only keys and read-write keys. But this should work. All right. Let me try it one more time. We're in the right one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not working. OK. Uh, the fun of live demos. All right, so let's go back to configuration. Did I not save it? Hold on. Maybe I just didn't save it. I did it because it said app update. It said it updated. So then it's got to be a wrong connection string. Maybe I typed something wrong or copied something wrong. Yeah, OK. So this connection string. And that should be the right one. Looks like it for me. OK. We save it. Refresh. Yeah, continue. I don't know why it didn't work. That's really annoying. OK, overview. Let's just open up a new tab in case it's caching something. Let's hope, let's hope, let's hope. It's, oh, it's refreshing because I updated the connection string. Yeah, that's the good error message. That's the one we wanted. I must have just miscopied that. I don't know. It's there now. So <laughs> there we go. So the app's working. We got the deployment going. Um, and uh, if I go into the feature flag now, so you guys saw the whole extended version of how you actually set this up. Uh, so now if I go into bum, 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 feature manager, and I click on the feature that's there, then it enables it. All right. Uh, and when I enable it, if I go back to the website, this is the JBCN conf one. Yeah, wait. There we go. So bits there now. So I can turn that on and off with the feature flag. So the other thing I mentioned, uh, so that's how you do A-B testing. But that's just turning the feature on for everybody, right? So let's go into the details here of how you actually set up other kinds of feature flags. So uh, let's call it JBCNConf. All right, um, and what I can do here, I can use a filter. Let me make this bigger. Let me see the back, it's kind of fuzzy. All right, so what I can do here is I can do targeting, meaning that for my A-B testing, I can target just a region. So I can target Switzerland. Only Switzerland can see the new feature. Or I can do a time window. So if I have something that's happening over a holiday, I could turn on this feature uh, during a, a certain time window. Or I can go into custom. And I can do a percentage. Where's the custom? Actually, it's probably easier if I just go in here. Edit filter parameters. So what you do is you actually put things in here. You can say percentage. And you can add the value here of 50. 
And what will happen is only half the people can see this um, at a time. So that's the A-B testing part of this. Uh, the, one, the simple thing I showed you is turn it on and off. You can also do this. So if only half the people will see it. And then for blue-green deployments, you can start here, and then you can say 60%, 70%. So you can continue to add people until you're up to 100%. Uh, there's another way to do this as well. Do we have time? Uh, inside of the app service, there's these things called deployment slots. I can set up a deployment slot uh, that only half the people see as well. So you could get really complicated if, if, you, if we want to. Instead of controlling it through Feature Manager, you can control it through the application as well. And there are certain conditions why you want to do both. Uh, so what you do is you'd add a slot here, uh, and then you'd set the traffic to 50%. You can have up to four slots. So you can have four versions of this application running at once. Uh, and that's kind of the difference between Feature Manager and this. So Feature Manager is just two, so you can have some people see it, some people don't. But in here, you can have up to four slots with people looking at different versions of the application and then tracking them and monitoring them as well. So we're almost out of time. I did want to cover a couple other things. So I mentioned before, um, if you're already in invested in DevOps, a lot of things I showed you today are new. But um, here's your typical software development lifecycle, a little more detail this time. And then there's all these applications that people already have out there. Uh, Microsoft and the tools I showed you today, GitHub and, and Azure DevOps and Azure Pipelines, work with all these tools. So for example, if you have Jenkins already, which a lot of people do, um, and you're doing build and test with Jenkins, you're probably not doing deployment with Jenkins because it's um, a little bit uh, difficult, but uh, you can use Jenkins for build and test and then pass the artifact over to GitHub Actions, and GitHub Actions can be set, but right now the trigger is on a push, so GitHub Actions can be set to trigger on uh, an update of an artifact that gets pushed out there, and that update of the artifact will actually do the deployment for you. Uh, so you can still manage all your artifacts and your builds and your tests using the tools you use, specifically Jenkins or others, uh, and then you use uh, Azure DevOps and Azure Pipelines and GitHub Actions for deploying the rest of that. So, uh, so I talked a little bit about what is DevOps, DevOps with GitHub, DevOps in action, and how you can keep your investments. Uh, and here's some information. So tomorrow as well, for those of you who are interested, we've got a Java and Microsoft behind the scenes session. I'll be presenting that as well. We're just going to talk about all the things that we do at Microsoft. I showed you one very specific thing here with App Service and GitHub Actions. Uh, but we've got a ton of other things that we do with Java at Microsoft. So if you're looking for options in the cloud and you want to learn about what Azure has available, uh, come and meet us at 10 a.m. tomorrow in room 114. And then I'm, I'm scheduled, uh, if you look in the app, the Hova app, Wuva app, I don't know how to pronounce it. but um, uh, I've got an Azure meetup that I scheduled at 2.30 tomorrow, and that's going to be more casual. Just uh, a few folks, we can hang around and you can ask questions. Uh, I think we're going to have some local people from the local team here to answer questions as well. So, and that's it. Uh, DevOps for Java Shops is where you can find the code I used today. Um, hopefully that was useful. Uh, you learned a little bit about GitHub Actions, feature flags, how to do that in Azure, and also how to actually deploy things with code spaces. So code spaces is pretty cool as well. If you guys have any questions, please uh, uh, do, do ask. Uh, but uh, Anyway, I'll be around. Uh, we've got about uh, five minutes left. I'll be around for more questions. Uh, if you guys uh, want to come up and ask, feel free. And uh, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>